Assalamu alaikum and good morning. It's Monday morning and we have, we're so happy to be here. Uh, Eid is just around the corner, it's fast approaching and it's the last episode of Morning Baraka for this Ramadan. I'm so excited about the lineup today. Yes, mashallah, it's Eid coming up in the next day, day or so, depending on the Lunar Canada. Um, and it's any, any day now, so please refer to your marriage of the exact day. I am really excited and although it's the last day for this um, series, it's a bittersweet feeling. But in the studio today, it's just as glorious. Eid is always such a wonderful feeling, even though the month of Ramadan will be missed greatly. And we won't have any more shows during Suhoor time. The blessings really have been abundant, mashallah. That's right, that's right, Sister Zara. I have to be honest, I will miss the month of Ramadan, I always do. But I'm so happy that it's Eid, I can't lie, and it's approaching and the benefits that come along and the celebrations. Uh, but on Morning Baraka, let's see what we've got coming up for you this morning. We have a beautiful recitation from, or should I say, a snippet from al Kaf from Brother Mustafa Ali. Inshallah, can't wait for that. And we also have Brother Ibrahim Ansari on the couch with our daily du'as this morning. Looking forward to that. Today's du'a is something to recite to wish the, mo the holy month a farewell. So much to look forward to, inshallah. We also have Sister Du'a with spiritual upliftment from the Holy Quran. I'm really looking forward to this morning. She'll be talking about the bounties of Eid, inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah. And in the kitchen we have um, NLP practitioner Fahima Muhammad and Chef Ben with an Eid watermelon dessert. Can't wait for that, Brother Bilal, and you better save yourself. No, definitely. <laughs> I'm not so fussed about watermelon. Don't worry, sister. I will save yourself. Inshallah, we really can't wait to see what we have coming up for you in the next snippet and the next section of Ramadan and Etiquette. Sister Zara and Sister Masuma Jaffa will be discussing the Ramadan etiquette and today's topic is Eid. And uh, I know that's going to be interesting. I know it. Uh, Inshallah, I'm looking forward to sitting with Sister Masuma. And also we have um, Abbas and I will miss him. He's been such a blessing this month and he's been staying up and he's going to give a final um, daily hadith. Mashallah. And to end this fantastic show and this fantastic series, in your morning prayers, before your morning prayers, we have our very own side Masin Shah, Ahkam SOS on the couch with your questions and queries. Can't wait to see what he's got in store for today. I think the topic is charity, uh, something that we need to pay attention to in our lives. Right now, it's time for our morning Baraka competition details. You and a friend could win the chance to visit Imam Hussein and Abul Fazl Abbas. Peace and blessings be upon them for July 2018. For the competition details, stay tuned for Brother Ahmed. Do you want the chance to visit Imam al-Hussein and al Fadl Abbas, peace be upon them both? Well, you've come to the right place. Morning Baraka is giving away two free tickets to Karbala this July 2018. I am standing here with the Holy Shrine of Imam al-Hussein behind me to give you the chance to send your salutations to the Imam in person. The exclusive Morning Barakah competition is the chance for you and a friend to visit the Holy Shrine of Imam Hussein. For your chance to win, answer the following question. Name two names given to the Holy Land of Karbala in Iraq. We need your emails with your answer and details which include a telephone number, phone name and address. Entries are free of charge and closed by the 30th of June 2018. All entries after may not be accepted, so please put your entries in before the deadline. To enter, you must be over the age of 18. And this is one of the most important parts of our day, um, starting with the recitation of Holy Quran. I'd like to welcome Brother Mustafa Ali. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah. How are you? Alhamdulillah, thank you. So I understand that today we'll be hearing Brother recite from um, Al-Qaf, the, the ayah that encourages us towards righteousness. Uh, I believe it's uh, ayahs 107 to 110, yeah, inshallah. Correct. Love to hear that. Inshallah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن 
Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. That was very, very beautiful from Brother Mustafa, the recitation of the Holy Quran. Absolutely. MashaAllah, it's been a excellent. really big blessing for us indeed. to be able to hear indeed, the recitation indeed. in the Holy Month. And we gently and appropriately move on to dua with yourself, Brother Ibrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Welcome, Brother Ibrahim. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me once again. No, thank you for joining mm -hmm. us. And the blessed month is coming towards an end. Yeah, inshallah. How is it treated you is or treating you? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Of course, uh, there's, there's always that hardship, but of course, like... With uh, difficulty. Yeah, we hope that ease, through inshallah. that is our reward, inshallah. Inshallah. How about, how about yourselves? How's gets, Ramadan going? gets tiring physically at this point, yeah. but... Mm -hmm. and Always. You know, they always say the first few days are hard and the last are, are easy. Mm -hmm. Rest of me, I don't know, for some yeah. reason, it's the opposite. The first few days just go no, smoothly. No, quite high, aren't the you? last ones is just like, yeah. especially when we just finished the shihad, the al qadr. The first few days are, are physically demanding, and then the last few days are emotionally hard because they feel sad. And you always feel like you haven't done enough. and mm. could Never you can do enough. More? Never can do too much. It's not, inshallah, it's with the. Blessing of Allah, He accepts whatever we have Shalom. done. Shalom. And yeah, yeah. Um, so the dua today we're going to talk about is um, to mark the end of the holy month the of Ramadan. Ramadan. Um, so if you'd like to... Um, I think the thing is, it came good with the dua that we chose for today with your statement that you just said of we haven't done enough and that will come, inshallah, in a bit after this recitation and the translation. Mm -hmm. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم هذا شهر رمضان الذي أنزلت فيه القرآن وقد تصرم وعوذ بوجهك الكريم يا رب 
أن يطلع الفجر من ليلتي هذه أو يتصرم شهر رمضان ولك ولك قبلي تبعة أو ذنب تريد أن تعذب تعذبني به يوم ألقاك وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد this dua <coughs> starts off with oh Allah this is the month of Ramadan in which you have revealed the Quran again we mentioned this uh, before as well it's always mentioning because yeah. yeah. it adds to this blessing of this holy month Absolutely. and it's about to come to an end inshallah may Allah grant us many more Ramadans inshallah. and grant us the health to fast in them inshallah, inshallah. I seek refuge with your noble face O oh Lord, that it dawns tonight or the month of Ramadan elapses while I am still liable to an offense or a sin that you want to punish me for committing when I will meet you. We haven't done enough. I seek refuge in you. If there is that small sin, forgive me before the dawn comes. Forgive me before the end of Ramadan in case there's a sin that you want to to um, mention on the Day of Judgment. That's a very heavy hearted. Is. Isn't it? Because you just think, when you actually look, and Allah remembers every, every sin of <laughs> our Micro we, detail, yeah. And yes, we definitely. forget, and yet when you're pleading to him <coughs> for his mercy, and yes, he's all encompassing, but for us to account for ourselves and to actually think, you know, if this was it, my life was to go now, mm. am I happy with what I've, not that you'd ever be happy, but can I show my face to Allah? Can I, can I meet Allah thinking definitely. that? You know, he's. I'm. I'm. I'm worthy of his of his acceptance. Well, Knowing you're full of sins. Exactly. By the way, you. I don't mean. Yeah. I'm no. But the generic you. Generic. And me as well. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. But speaking for myself, of course, first, yani, this the sins that that I've committed is like, you know, of the sins that you commit, you know, you know, you're committing a sin, um, you know that you're not there with pure intention, uh, mm -hmm. not pure intention. Sorry, you're not there with a pure soul. Yeah, and yeah. by a pure soul, I mean it's not free from sin. I'm not trying to say you don't have that pure intention towards Allah, no, but you're not free from sin. Yet, we still have um, this thing of, do you know what? I know Allah will forgive me. Yeah. I know Allah has, is, 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 has that mercy to Him that if I was to turn to Him, He will say, do you know what? You're forgiven. Still have that hope in yeah. Him, isn't it? And it's mentioned in Dua al-Iftitah, which we mentioned possibly mm. in, in the first episode. Where we mentioned, the, you call upon me, I, I move away. You you show love and compassion towards me, I, I turn my head away. Mm. You do this, I do that. Yet, none of that denied you from accepting my praise. All of our rebellion yeah. was a block. And the thing, is, the thing is, it truly shows his mercy. Why? Because us as human beings, let's, let's, let's just speak honestly here. If, if we see someone constantly oppressing us, if we see someone we are constantly calling out to and they're always putting us to the side, even even with, with family, Salat al-Rahim is, is one yeah. of the most important things that we have to, to bring family closer. Mm -hmm. Yet we always have this excuse of, why do I always need to call? Yeah. Why do I always why need to Why can't he text? call me? Why can't he call me? Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always calling you. You're always pressing decline. Yet he will, still, he, he will not call. No, when you call... He will, he will answer you. Yet, while, while you're all pressing decline all the time, he's calling, you're there, do you know what? I can't be asked for this right now. Decline. He's I'll calling do it again. Later. I have do you time. know what? He, he sent you a text. Do you know what? You delete. I'll reply later. Yeah, do you know yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he said, let me even delete it. I, I, I can't Let's be asked for this right now. Yeah, yeah. Yet, when you, not when you call, no, when you're thinking about calling and he knows you have that pure intention within you, he will answer you before you call. He will answer you before you call. And we have in, 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 our, in, our, in our Hadith Qudsi, the Hadith Qudsi that we have from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Abdi ata'ni. My slave, my servant, obey me. Takun, there's two, methali or methli. Methali means an example of me. Methli means like me. Same idea. Takun, methali. You say to something, be, and it will be. After what? 
after we constantly call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after mm -hmm. we set ourselves mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the right state to call upon him. And in that case, without before you even flinch, your dua is accepted. Before flinching, your dua is accepted. And that is part of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have in our, in our narrations that even with the imams, with many of the struggles that they went through, it is narrated that if they were to turn their head just a bit to the sky and, and wanting to do dua upon everything that is happening, then that's it. It's, it's, it's game over, literally. And we have, I don't, I don't really want to mention this because it is a very emotional thing to mention, but just generally just the outline of mm. it. Fatima Zahra, when she came out, out of her house and Imam Ali was in the masjid, it is narrated that Imam Ali, when he saw her, when he saw her, about to make dua yeah. on the people, he sent one of his companions, he said to him, go to Fatima to Zahra, to move Stop away. Her, yeah. He comes to her, he says, Amir al-Mu'mineen has just sent me to you. And he has said, your father was sent as a mercy to mankind. Do you not be the reason for the destruction? Often had she done that. By Allah, if she had Everything. turned her head, that's it. Game over, literally. The, the earth would have collapsed. Why? Because they have that true ta'a. You see when I said, Abdi ya ta'ani takun mathali taqul shaykun fayakun, you say B and O B, it has a, yeah. a prerequisite. The prerequisite is ta'a, obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doing what he has asked you to do. Yeah. Throughout your daily actions, through your akhlaq. Mm -hmm. Akhlaq is a very important one. Absolutely. In, in, in the Quran, I think we'd all here agree. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best of those who worshipped, yeah. the best of those who did Salah, mm -hmm. the end of the Qur'an, does he say, did Allah mention the Prophet Salah? Never. Did Allah mention the Prophet's Dua? Never. Did Allah mention the Prophet's Hajj? Never. Did Allah mention the Prophet's fasting way in Ramadan? Never. Yet when he came to, to mention the Prophet, he said, إِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ You're upon great akhlaq. Yeah. Allahu Akbar. Beautiful. Beautiful. Amazing ayah. Shows us how we truly need to act, mm -hmm. especially living we, in the West. Definitely, and I think you're so eloquently um, telling, you know, informing us and you know, sharing with us. But I think when you look at the stories of Ahl Bayt and, and especially the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, the way they dealt with, you know, mm. the love they showed and the compassion and the way they taught, you know, the followers and obviously lessons for us for, um, for infinite times, it's it's with such kindness, such excellent morals that it's not with harshness it's not with saying you must do this and you know follow me and you think how many lessons we can continue to learn of how we speak to others you know there's so many things that sometimes we think oh did i come across too harsh did i say and you think at every point we have things to learn definitely um and i think you're so beautifully mentioning um you know how the holy prophet was Sorry, an Allah example Allah. yeah the thing is another thing i do want to mention if we have time yes for sure um in the dua we'll make time <laughs> In the dua, it, it talks about confessing because you're, you're confessing to Allah, you're saying, I have sins. Mm. So do not let dawn come or Ramadan end without you having forgiven my sins. And this confession part is very important. The most important part. Mm. Because when you confess for something, it means you know that you have done something wrong. That's f number one. Number two, in our ahadith, we, we, we are told that when you want to make tawbah, the very first step of tawbah is to confess. Is mm -hmm. to turn to Allah, Oh Allah, I did this specific sin. Then you ask for forgiveness. Then you do not repeat and that is where your sin is forgiven. And the beauty of this confession is it's direct. Yeah. It's not between you and a third party. No. It's you straight to Allah. Straight to Allah. Yeah. I did this. Yeah. It's good for you to acknowledge, remember your shortcomings. And, and remembering that there is a higher power, right. an infinite power, infinite mercy above you that will forgive you for whatever sin you have done. Do you know what's actually um, reminding me that, you know, when you're talking about these steps of um, asking for forgiveness, a confession, <coughs> it's the acceptance, and then you go on and ask Allah, you know, that I acknowledge that I've done these steps. And even when you look at um, forgiving, you know, maybe your family members that you say we, we, we may be really hard done by, but it's those steps that you have to say, yeah, okay, the, the acceptance of what's happened, but the healing comes in allowing things to let, to let them go and to forgive mm -hmm. others. Yeah. And if we don't have that mercy towards one another, yeah. and in this holy month, and while we still have time to make those amends and then turn to Allah and say, 
you know, I've done my bit with others, but you have that mercy on me. You're Definitely. more merciful than, you know, than what we can be. But we surely have to be with one another equally then. And then 100%. before we turn to... One of the best things to do during the month of Ramadan, or what, what you start off with, is you forgive people. Yeah. Why? Because when you then turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you say, like you beautifully mentioned, Oh Allah, I have forgiven. You are the most forgiving. You are the most merciful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Forgive the slave of yours. That, that, that is just pure beauty in, in, in asking Allah, in a way of asking. And we mentioned the salawat part where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he answers the salawat, so he'd be too shy to not answer the other, yes, yes, the yes, other yes, dua. Yes, yes. It's the same thing here. He has shown mercy from you, so how about the most merciful? Is he really just going to say, oh, do you know what? Let's put them to the side? Definitely not. Inshallah not. Thank you Inshallah. so much. Thank you very much. Have thoroughly enjoyed your contribution. I may have Allah enjoyed reward being you here. for your efforts. Jazakumullah mm -hmm. khair. May Allah reward you too. Inshallah. Eid Mubarak to come. Inshallah. Inshallah on you and your blessed families. Inshallah. And inshallah so many more years to come. Inshallah. Uh, to you, to our respected viewers. Thank you so much. And inshallah. Keep the best of success door, and may you see nothing but good and success in this life and in the hereafter. Amen. 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 Inshallah, we have Tawfiq to be here again next year. Inshallah. And um, inshallah, whatever ibadah you have done, may Allah accept it. Jazakumullah khair likewise, family, inshallah. And may Allah bless your deceased. And Jazakumullah khair likewise. Um, that's all we've got time for. Next up is Baraka Pals with Dua Maksumi and the topic is the bounties of Eid. Assalamu alaikum, I am Dua Maghzumi and I am here to show you how the Holy Quran can improve your life. Eid. Eid is a very important aspect of a Muslim's life because it marks the start of the month of Shawwal which begins with the feast to end the period of fasting. People start their early day praying up Salat al-Fajr followed by a hearty breakfast before heading to the mosque to pray Salat al-Eid. What is Salat al-Eid? Salat al-Eid is mandatory. During the presence of Imam al-Mahdi, may Allah hasten his noble reappearance. And it is must to be performed in jama'ah. Ah. However, during the occultation of the Imam, peace and blessings be upon him, it is mustahab to pray Salat al-Eid. So it's not wajib. However, how do we determine when is Eid? According to Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Husseini al-Shirazi's jurisprudence, the beginning of the month of Eid is not established by the prediction of astronomers. However, if one could be confident of the observations, then it would be mandatory to act upon it. However, this is acceptable to other than the month of Ramadan and Shawwal. In those two cases, the, in those two months, it is mandatory that in the beginning of the month, you are established to be proven by sight, giving the sight. The hadith says, fast with the sight with the moon and break it with sightning. If the crescent was confirmed in one country, it does not apply to another country unless, unless those two countries are close to each other or the horizons the same. So it is mandatory to fast on the day if you do not know whether it's Eid or not. It's mandatory to fast on the day until Maghrib. If you know that it was Eid before Maghrib, then it's mandatory to break your fast. We are blessed to have a great scholar who is responsible to refer to us and who is more understandable than us when is Eid and when is the first day of Shawwal to celebrate our Eid. Eid Mubarak to you all. Wassalamu alaikum. Nutrition and health. Uh, today I'm joined by Chef Ben. Assalamu alaikum and hello, Ben. Assalamu hello. And Sister Fahima Mohammed, the NLP practitioner, here for the uh, for the duration. So, what do you have in store? What do you have in yep, store for today, us? Today, another simple recipe. That's the name of the game: um, a cottage cheese, watermelon, and pistachio parfait. Fahima, have you heard of that before? Not really, but I do know about balance and having that combination put together. Yeah, balance and the great. sweet and the sour. That's what it's and all about. And also something a little bit hot and cold. Yep, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. absolutely yep. right. Absolutely I believe right. Uh, there's, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him and his family, has been quoted as saying that he, he used to eat, I believe it was dates with, with watermelon, watermelon because yes. the, the watermelon would cool the, the hotness of the date. Or, you know, absolutely. The, the, the and that just shows how we have to balance our food generally. Balance and how our we lives. Can actually, yes. And 
and how everything is made in pairs. Yeah, and so how Allah everything, says in the Quran, yeah, that's right. Exactly. That's right. Yeah, so yeah. it all goes hand in hand. So, you know, this ingredient really does sort of remind us of a lot of things. This recipe is actually there to show us how we can do that. And I think that watermelon is a good way and a good source of actually, um, of actually hydrating ourselves mm -hmm. without actually taking yes. a lot of water as so well. So much water in watermelon, a obviously. Lot. Yes. And we normally just have it like at the evenings, you know, with tea, when yeah. we're breaking fast. Yeah. But this is something that we can also add to, you know, as a difference. So I, I really like the fact that you've chosen this uh, recipe. Yeah, this is a fantastic recipe. Yeah, you go with that knife again, Ben. <laughs> I haven't cut myself yet. And cottage cheese as well. I mean, it's got a lot of benefits to it. People think that even maybe some pregnant women are able to, but obviously mm -hmm. I would go and check that, you know, double check Check with your physician, as they say. Definitely, yes. but um, I think it's one of the cheeses that, you know, it is actually um, recommended and it can be have. So I think... This Bodybuilders is just, use it a lot, good protein yes, source. Yes, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. a lot of protein in here. It's totally different to what we would normally use as a parfait, or is it a normal? Uh, parfait, you know, it's a term used a lot in cooking. Uh, it can mean so many different things. You can have frozen parfaits. Parfait normally just means layered. Okay. So this is why we're layering the watermelon with the parfait, various uh, other garnishes, nuts. Like a trifle? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a posh trifle. <laughs> A posh trifle. So, yeah, just... You're being posh today, I like that. <laughs> well, we have a lot of challenges in Ramadan. You know, it's not just food, it's the mental aspect of it. And, you know, we come to a point where we go through the whole entire month and mm -hmm. we come towards the end and it is tiring. It is exhausting mentally and physically. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. still want mm -hmm. to keep that momentum going. Yes. And that's what's important. And our food is important to actually make sure that we have that momentum and it will stimulate our minds. To it keep will that keep mindset. Keep that, mm -hmm. keep that mindset. Exactly. And yes, and also when we have, you know, the time of Eid approaching, doesn't mean that we have to be so strict. We can actually have our cheat days and, you know, go a little I, bit I prefer outside. a treat day, actually. Okay, <laughs> a treat day. That's actually a better, better language, definitely. Um, and that would actually help us to, you know, build. But don't get taken away thinking that we've just had this treat and we have to continue with that Don't binge habit. out, don't binge out. Yeah, yeah binge out. there to has stop. to be control. Yeah. Yeah. It has to be controlled. And you can still be healthy and still have treats, to yeah. be honest. I mean, is the way it, you look at it. Yeah. it. Moderation is important because say that you've been diligently following a certain food, food plan, and then you say, you know what, um, I'm going to have a slice of cake. You don't have to finish the whole cake. Exactly. Enjoy that slice. And leave it as that. And normally a lot of people don't even Easier enjoy the day. Done, <laughs> <laughs> but normally Sorry. no one ever enjoys Eid as much because the indulgence is so high because after all of that fast you're like, I'm going to have everything. And then you do and half yeah. the day is just, you know, ruined yeah. by the way in which you feel because you've just overeaten. Sluggish, eaten. indigestion, all exactly. the things that you didn't want to have in so Ramadan true. you have on the day yeah. after. It doesn't so make sense. So just be careful when you actually are taking this into consideration. But mm -hmm. this is an amazing and it looks beautiful. Very beautiful, very photogenic. <laughs> as they say, but um, it's just so simple, so simple. You can. It looks the part. You can freestyle if you want. Add different fruits. I've got some strawberries here. These are going to go on as a garnish. Got some nuts. Got some. Okay. Got some oh, to add here. nuts to that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, for kids, this isn't generally what you would immediately think of. No. Uh, as a as a dessert, but we're trying to be healthy. It's it's about making it. Accessible. So and you haven't pounded, but you haven't pounded the cottage cheese in no. any way or nothing like that. You, it's good just no, like that. that. That's how it should be eaten. The consistency Absolutely. is okay. right. Okay. And a lot of milk is in cottage cheese and it's really healthy for your bones. Calcium. It's calcium, very yeah. good calcium mm -hmm. intake. Mm -hmm. So the nutrients mm -hmm. and the health you know, benefits are definitely there. Definitely. Absolutely so we need right. to just continue with education about food. Because as we've learned in these few segments alone, it is possible to eat healthy, fresh homemade food mm -hmm. from scratch mm -hmm. and just to remember that and to think that it's not impossible whether if it's early morning or in the evening or to prepare for the next morning it is possible i know there's an excuse of you know working Excuse, late excuses excuses excuses, excuses. excuses. yes <laughs> working late having you know hours that are late but honestly yeah. speaking to make these fresh foods will give you that extra boost. this look this is really Gives looking this energy. is warming up to look like something <laughs> i love that presentation it's beautiful so simple guys so so simple for for you guys at home um, so yeah, that is pretty much there. All we need to do is garnish it with... I can't believe how quick and easy that was. Yeah. Hey, it's just a case of chopping it. We've been chopping it up verbally and you've just been chopping it up <laughs> literally and we're there. That's it. So I'm just going to chop some pistachios. I love pistachios. Such an amazing nut. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone with nut allergies. Yeah, yeah. Substitute with uh, seeds. 
Okay, what kind Chia of seeds? seeds? Okay, yes, um, we had that in the previous shows. Yeah, sunflower seeds, as yeah, as as we've mentioned. Um, you know, why not mix up do do yogurt, do some some kind of peanut butter. You don't have to do exactly what we're doing here. Do do some different fruits, different. Um, Experiment a bit. Yeah, that's what food's all about. Because if you're eating the same thing every day, oh, you're going to get bored. Yeah, and yeah. you're going to turn to comfort foods that you know. Quick and easy fast food, which is not it. healthy. But, but this has got the. Co I can't help noticing out of everything in there the cottage cheese, and I keep coming back to it, and I'm thinking, okay, maybe at Sahara time or Iftar time, it maybe is it problematic because it's cheese? I just think of cheese as a slightly acidic. It is acidic. It's got good um, fats in it, so healthy, healthy fats. And and you know our body needs those kinds of um, fatty acids to 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 live. Okay. Okay. Not all fats are bad. Yeah. 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 Uh, we have absolutely. Good, we no, have, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We have we have good fats as well. And cottage cheese has has a number of health benefits. And I know with your line of um, profession as well, you you sort of cater for big companies and restaurants and even individuals. Yeah. So you know all this you know ingredients that you've given us today yeah. and all the recipes is definitely from your experience and you know yes, that yeah. they have got health benefits to it because people are much more you know aware of you know what mm -hmm, they're eating mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know the mindsets have changed yeah I mean when I first started cooking I was working in sort of fine dining restaurants where you lo use loads of butter loads of just sort of really unctuous indulgent rich, really indulgent, indulgent yeah just delicious it is delicious <laughs> I'm not denying that, but it's not necessarily what you want to be eating every day. And when I pr my career progressed, I moved into um, sort of high-profile companies where people are sort of more on the ball when it comes more to... More conscious, yes. More conscious of um, mm -hmm. what they're putting into their bodies. And this, this is where, you know, dishes like this come in. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just super delicious, super healthy, and absolutely what you want to be eating on a, on a, on a regular basis. So, and what, what I've realized when you said that people have become more conscious, I think they've become more conscious because they've realized that how their bodies do play, you know, such a role in their daily dealings. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. in Ramadan, we want to be, you know, not just abstaining from food and drink. We want to be, to be able to have the energy to be spiritual, well. to mm -hmm. be able to practice more. So, yeah. you know, when we're up late and we have to pray or if we have to go to the mosque or mm -hmm. whatever it may be, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, these sort of things, it might be simple, but it actually will help us to do that. It will keep us refreshed. It will keep us more awake and alert. It will give us that mind and that body mm -hmm. to actually perform what we need to during these months and you know, these mm -hmm. weeks in Ramadan. And that's what's really important and it will help us even in our work. And we realize that if we can actually abstain from food and drink during Ramadan and work and study and do all of that, Imagine what we can do at the rest of the year exactly. if we were to exactly. perform in that same manner. Because ultimately, Ramadan is showing us our potential, right? Yes. If we've been able to execute this, we can do it. That's telling us that we can do it. If we can do it at that time, it's possible. It's absolutely, absolutely possible to do it absolutely. at another time. So we can replicate that. And every Definitely. year, it's about trying to better ourselves from how we were before. So try to, because Islam is about becoming. Not the journey, just being. the it's journey, journey, the journey mm -hmm. toward, and towards the better self, towards the better self. Yeah. And yeah. as we've said, research is continuously, you know, continuing to do more um, research about food, about drinks, about whatever it may be in life, mm -hmm. and even our mind, our body, whatever it may be. So we need to keep updated with that, so that we can actually be on point and current. Yeah. We yeah. have to stay yeah. current. Yeah. So what do you look forward to for Eid? Yourself. For Eid, you know what? As, as Any a, plans? Anything on the horizon? Well, as, as a new... You're a chef. You, are you um, doing big functions? Uh, what you got on? What you? As a new river, mm -hmm. um, I'm normally at my family's, um, my um, step family's um, for, for those kinds of, kinds of things. And I'm, okay. I'm really treated to some amazing biryanis and... Uh-oh. Just fantastic. Here we go. Here we go. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, no. fantastic foods. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, I'm really lucky, actually. I'm, I'm, Do you make biryani? I, c I can't make biryani like they oh, do. No, oh, not no. yet, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. I need yet. to get the recipe. Yeah. It's on my list. <laughs> How about yourself, Fahima? Yeah, of course, it's a time for family get-together. It's about reflection. It's about, you know, celebrating, of course, mm -hmm. but also, you know, trying to sort of improve ourselves consistently. And Eid is a time, you know, for celebration. It is something for the children, for the adults, for families and friends and everyone to get together. And obviously, we enjoy it with food. And it's a really good part to sort of bring people together and connect. Mm -hmm. 
that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know, you can enjoy foods from all, cult all cultures, all backgrounds and everything and still be healthy and still be conscious of, you know, what exactly is good for you. Mm -hmm. But again, mm -hmm. I will really, really recommend people to go to the GP, get themselves checked, yeah. make sure that they understand their bodies for themselves, know what they need, you know, for themselves and especially for Ramadan so that they can actually benefit to the fullest. Yeah. And that's yeah. really important. Yeah. That is, I mean, that's really beautiful. And I think that what we've showed um, and being displaying throughout um, our conversations is we've kind of, I would like to think that we've extended the meaning of Islamic food because you know sometimes you hear that term you use Islamic food and you think of only specific cultures but you've brought up some different recipes yeah. that are not yeah. from traditionally what we would consider the Muslim world but they've been halal so as far as I understand they're Islamic. Actually, another point that you've just said now is also because we think we have to, you know, put lots more into something in a dish, for example, mm -hmm. in order to, you know, give someone, especially for guests was to come, you know, the more, you know, I don't know. Generosity. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yes. It's not even about the balance of, you know, the actual amount, but even the richness of it. Mm -hmm. So it just shows us something that looks so beautiful and so rich is so refreshing and actually healthy can yes. still be, yeah. you know, put forward to your guests. And it can actually be good because a lot of the times, you know, we only mm -hmm. know these really high fats and lots of sugar meals and desserts mm. in order to, pre to present to our guests. But actually, we can do something so lovely and light Absolutely. and still be healthy. I mean, this, this could be the centerpiece of, of any table. Yes. Um, you know, I, I, I hate to spoil this as no, a centerpiece, no. but are we going to get a chance to take? Well, I see a you're, clean, I see a clean spoon of yonder to. by the oats. You're welcome to. Oh, there's two clean spoons. Oh, two clean spoons. hey, 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 oh, hey. There we go. <laughs> Thank Voila. you. Voila. Voila. All right. I All have right. been waiting, actually. I'll, put my clipboard. Good thing I'll have you... to put my clipboard down for this one, because this is, ooh. <laughs> I'm going to try so, yeah, and get a Why not of... use it as a centerpiece for the, for the table and, and just make a really big one and garnish it with, like, mint and all those different kinds of fancy things that, that intrigue us? Mm. That's, 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 that's yeah. different. It's different. Don't look convinced there. <laughs> Um, I love the combination. Mm -hmm. I'm getting I love there. the fact that I'm, get, I'm getting there. Just one particular I'm, ingredient. I'm on becoming its a own. believer in this. Yeah, but one particular <laughs> ingredient on its own, like cottage cheese, is not necessarily something yeah. that people will have, which is healthy. But when you have a combination, mm. it can actually be something that you know mm. you can have the health factor into it, as well as the healthy you know ingredients exactly. alongside it. And that's what I like about it, and the sweetness of the you know. Even just the strawberries without the chocolate is there. And mm -hmm. you've got, you know, wow. the melon. It's, it's a really nice combination. I think it's really refreshing and I think it's really healthy. And I think that, you know, it'll just give people a nicer way of preparing food, especially myself, because timing is so important. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely, exactly. absolutely. Exactly. Mm. I mean, so simple. I mean, so in, my, in, in, in the unideal world, I would have I would have showered it with those chocolate buttons that you got there. <laughs> there you go, there you go. <laughs> with people with a sweet tooth, or even for just you know, if you've got kids around, adding chocolate to something, just a small portion is not gonna. It's not know, gonna make yeah. much. It's exactly. Not, not but like I said, the melon food. and the strawberries are really sweet itself. So even having yeah. good quality food, of the best of the of, you know particular foods, can actually make a difference to the actual food. Yes. Mm -hmm. So remember mm -hmm. that when quality you're, is yeah. everything. Absolutely. You can buy organic, but. Um, Yes, your preference. Yeah, or grow something by yourself hey, if you can. That's loads even of the next have step. have gardens now and um, yes, allotments. allotments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that so. was, that was yeah, that was something to behold. <laughs> I'm gonna once the camera once we've I'm, that's my after. I'll deal with that yeah. after. Yes, definitely. But thank you both so much. Thank you it's for been us. it's been a journey. Thank you. I really appreciated your time, and uh, thank you all. And uh, up next, Sister Masuma Jaffa, Ramanan and Etiquette, the importance of Eid. Wow, yum, dessert. So, inshallah, we'll um, definitely be making that recipe. Thank you, Brother Bilal. Um, and now we have um, Ramadan etiquette. We're going to continue that discussion with our lovely sister Masum. Asalaamu As Alaikum and welcome. Asalaamu Alaikum Thank you. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. How about How's yourself? the month been? It's gone so quickly. <laughs> it always does, doesn't it? It's always the case you feel. Um, but inshallah, Allah blesses everything inshallah. you've done. I'm sure you've been very inshallah, productive and busy. Um, and even joining us, thank you so much. Um, so we're going to be having a discussion on Eid, and um, it's often sort of one that we're so excited about approaching, you know, for very different reasons. Some people just <laughs> relieve the month's over and you can start eating again, and some people are really sad, aren't they, that, that actually that the month is departing and they understand the blessings of this month that have um, been surrounding us. Um, so from a sort of religious perspective, obviously, um, 
how do we prepare for Eid and the Ibadah that we're supposed to do and not just focus on the sort of, wow, we can eat what we want on that day, which is obviously the mercy yeah. from Allah as well. So maybe we can talk I about... Think if I pick up on what you said and yeah. just expand on that a little bit, I think mm -hmm. it's really important because, uh, you know, the first of Shawal, Shaitan is freed, so he's there again. Um, and he will get to dif different people different ways. Right. Okay. So you'll have one extreme uh, where people are so happy that the month is over, um, they can eat, that, you know, that's all they're going to be focusing on. It'll be, and they'll overeat and they'll feel really sick because they haven't eaten, you know, yeah. like that for the whole month. And mm. then all of a sudden they're, you know, sort of sugar eating high. Some, yeah. yeah. So, you know, and, and they're going to lose out on the benefit of that mm. day. And then you'll have the other extreme where you have those people who have really enjoyed the month and now are really missing it and mm. it's, you know they're, they're so down about the fact that oh you know we, we were going to mosque every day we were seeing everyone we were doing ibadah together and now we don't and mm. so the positive of the month has gone into this concept of negative thinking and feeling sorry and that pity of now it's you know gone what are we going to do so both extremes are wrong mm. if we can come to the middle where you're yes you're happy and you're sad but neither one is overwhelming. Right. So you're, and, and why are you happy and sad? So yes, you're sad because obviously the month of Barakah, the month where the doors of heaven were open, yeah. the doors of hell were closed, where shaitan was locked up, has passed. Mm. And that is a sad feeling. Mm. But at the same time, God is all merciful and he's still there. And inshallah, okay. he blesses us with another year. Yes, inshallah. Yeah. Um, and we're happy because we have been able to fulfill that month oh, we've yeah. been able to complete that month mm. and hopefully you know we're happy because inshallah god has forgiven us our sins because we have done sincere repentance and he's accepted the fast from us and we have grown in this month so we're happy from all of that and that's what you said in the beginning when we have the outcome of yeah. our fasting and inshallah that is the outcome we, we achieve yeah. and, and and if you look at again the the the, the verses in the holy quran mm. when god talks about fasting he says that the, the purpose of the fast is so that they may get and gain taqwa. But when he talks about my Ramzan, he says the, with the month of Ramadan, so that they may be grateful. Mm. So again, it's you know that concept of you can only be grateful if you've actually achieved something. Yeah. So if I've got the taqwa, then I will be grateful. Yes. And I will, you know, I will magnify God like he tells me to in the Holy Quran. So that concept of Allahu Akbar that you hear when you mm. hear, you know, the mm. Eid Salah and, you know, you'd actually do that from the heart because you can actually feel the that action, taqwa, yeah. that closeness to Allah. You feel like you've got somewhere. Mm. And I can imagine when you're sort of, you know, as a you know unified ummah, where you're all going towards, you know, that celebration. And what an achievement, yeah. mashallah, that we've got through this time. And Allah has given us, kept us with the health, made it easy, as you were explaining in the earlier um, mornings that we were discussing these topics, that um, it's, you know, it's something that we can't take for granted. And, yeah. you know, he is, he's taken care of us in this month. He's fed us, he's clothed us. We've, inshallah, been able to pay the charity and done the best that we can do. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to sort of, you know, celebrating Eid, um, well, even actually the night before, we were talking about Qadr nights, the night of Eid is very... Yes, very. I mean, it, it, there are hadiths that actually talk about that it is just as important as the night of Qadr. It, so it's really So not important. to lose that focus, yeah. is it? Right to the Exactly. End. So it, it's, you know, make realising that this is the final night. Wow. You know, sometimes we, we don't realise it's the night of Eid till yeah. later on because obviously it's dependent yeah. on the moon sighting. So if we know that it's the night, actually make the most of it. You know, yeah. this is the final How night. How would they make the most? What would you say? So you've got certain amals that, you're, you, yeah. that is recommended to, mm. to, to recite. So you've got a two rakat salah, for example, mm -hmm. where um, you're told to do 100 uh, surah khlas. And again, um, from the fiqh perspective, just a little reminder that when you're doing the 100 surah khlas, the bismillah is part of the surah khlas. I know people who've started with the Bismillah oh, and bless. then they recite the yeah. whole Surah class and then they recite the whole without doing another mm. Bismillah. So each Surah class has its has own its Bismillah own and that's right. really important to remember. Yeah. And Thank if you, you can't do 100, do 10. Mm. Even if worse comes to worse, do one. Utilize, but at least do yeah. do something. Yeah. You know, it's, it's about doing something than not doing anything at all. And it's so important, isn't it? Because, you know, I know um, in the subcontinent of, you know, um, South Asia, people have like, you know, um, Eid night and they're putting mendi and they're singing and dancing. And it's so as opposed to what Islam is actually saying, yeah. you know, of course, celebrate. And then when we can talk about how best to celebrate with families, but not to forget that actually the whole purpose 
was the elevation of the soul, wasn't it? Yeah. So and it's, it's exactly the same thing with the weddings, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you get so focused on the celebration of the wedding that you forget that the wedding is between you know, yeah. the male, the female, and God. Yeah. And it's bringing God into the picture Definitely. that then makes it a little bit more sanctified. Yes. Rather than just concentrating on the celebration. Definitely. So there's nothing wrong nothing, with celebrating, yeah. but it's how you celebrate and make sure that celebration becomes an ibadah yeah. rather than just a celebration for its own purpose. And, and accord time to it, right? Not to yeah. be so, you know, not to have the celebration go out, like you're saying, the extremities. Yeah. It's about the, the middle, middle ground. Yeah, Islam is all about the middle yeah. ground. Yeah. So in terms of, um, so let's go the other way then, then sort of celebrating. Um, how would you say is the best time? It's obviously very family orientated, community orientated, perhaps the people that have, are, don't have anybody to maybe invite them in. I mean, I, I know that reverts find it very difficult times mm -hmm. at Eve, don't they? That they're not really a part of a community or family, maybe on their mm -hmm. own. So how best is it to utilize those sort of so it's, it's again, understanding the purpose of the Eid. Okay, so Eid is where you now have um, you spend the whole month mm. reflecting, changing, putting, implementing certain changes in your life, um, and you know you've—it's like you've graduated. Mm. You know, That's it's, it's like that was the yeah. training ground, and you've graduated. And if you imagine in your graduation, who would you call? You would call those who you love yeah. to be part of that graduation, and you would also want to do it with your friends who have been doing the course with you. So it's the same sort of principle on the Eid day, which is your graduation. You want to be with the family, you know, with those you love, mm. and also with the community because you've done it all together. Mm. So it's about being an ummah as well as a family. But also, I think it's also sort of realizing that, okay, I've taken these steps. I, now I know I'm going to need help because now, you know, shaitan's been unlocked. Mm. The blessings aren't as much. It's much more difficult You feel it, now. don't you? Yeah, straight yeah, away. Yeah. Um, so again, my family... My friends, you know, those are the ones I'm going to turn to for that support that I need now. And we're going to move closer together towards Allah. And also that reminds you of the, of the saying that if you have good friends that remind you, family that remind you, friends who obviously the, they say the family we choose, but yeah. um, to actually make sure they're the sort of friends that don't just, you know, enjoy, they, they forbid us from the evil, you know. Yeah, enjoy the, the good yeah. and forbid you from the evil, yeah. yeah. So you've got those, that very valuable network yeah. of support. Exactly. And I think maybe if we actually discuss with, with our family and friends, the, the steps that I want to take, maybe then they can sort of, you know, just sort of prompt mm -hmm. you when you're sort of moving away from that goal that you have decided for your own self. But, you know, a lot of the times, if we're accountable to another human being, yeah. it sort of pushes us to, yeah. to do it. Um, I know we're always accountable to God, but I think we forget that. Yes. So yeah. it's, it's really important to maybe sort of just share maybe mm. some goals that we have. Do you for think the it's like um, like New Year Eve resolutions? We make resolutions. Yes, so exactly. perhaps make resolutions. Yeah. And so those resolutions should have made be made have been made on the night of Qadr. Yeah. You've practiced them for the ten nights that are there, and then and now it's now it's like okay, now the training is finished. The graduations. Graduations. Yeah. So if you think about it, it's like you know when you're going um, when you're going to be a firefighter or a policeman or something mm. like that or a policewoman. Um, you, you know, they don't put you into danger when you're actually practicing, when mm. you're in the training ground. They never put you into no. danger. So it, it's like my Ramzan is our safety net. This is where our training happens, uh, where shaitan's locked up. There's no yeah. way we're going to, you know, be in danger. Yeah. And then once we're ready, which is on the day of Eid, it's like now you go out into the world and now you're, you know, it's like a rebirth, isn't it? If you think about the mother's womb, yeah. you're just, you know, you're such a protection. Allah's giving you mercy. Everything's there for yeah. you. And then you're out in this world. And now something. it's like you've got right. to fight. And you've, you've got to be ready for that yeah. fight. And, and you need people around you to Definitely. support you in that fight. Definitely. And I think it's, and that's why it's always, it's very important to reach out to people that are isolated and perhaps don't have families around them, the reverts that, you know, perhaps invite them on your celebration days and say, come and join our family yes. and open your, because your again, doors. Because again, it's about bringing the yeah. ummah. Exactly. You know, a lot of the times we sit there and we, we talk about the fact that we want the 12th Imam to come. Yeah. But until we're united, Absolutely. he's not going to come. Yeah. So, it, by remembering those who don't have anyone and inviting them into our house, that's, that's the concept of bringing that unity in and, and doing it together. Definitely. It's, um, it's, you know, it's such a beautiful occasion. And even your neighbors, you know, just to say that this is what Muslims do. That, you know, I remember when we were growing up, yeah, it's you know, our Christmas, but that's just the way they would yeah. understand it. But now, alhamdulillah, people are much more educated and they know And what you have Eid cards now. Yeah, so you don't definitely. even have to give them, you know, blank cards. You can actually buy Eid cards, yeah. which actually are, are very um, sense. You know, so they'll talk about something that they can actually understand as well. Definitely. And, and I think, you know, we go out of our way 
to sort of, you know, um, give them Christmas gifts and celebrate Definitely. Christmas with them. Yeah. So why can we not do the same for Eid, if yeah. not more? Because this is actually a celebration that is important to me. Yeah. So, you know, actually, rather than you know, sort of celebrating the Christmas, or if you want to celebrate Christmas, that's fine, but mm. ensure that you celebrate the Eid yep. with especially non-Muslim neighbours. So, you know, just a box of chocolates or with, with an Eid card. And it's a good old opportunity to show your khlaq, isn't it? Like exactly. you're saying that, you know, they, so they have a positive image about Islam to say that actually we are sharing and caring. And, and, and it's a good opportunity for them to ask questions yeah. as well, because you're opening yourself up to sort of, okay, you know, this is our Eid, and they can, then they can ask you. And that's how then they will find it. And maybe you were the tool that God decided to choose to guide someone else. And Definitely. it would be through that guidance that that person may come towards Islam. And often people learn through actions, don't they, of others, and something inspires them, yeah. um, rather than you know necessarily sort of verbally saying, no, you must do this. Yes. That doesn't usually sit well with people, no, does it? All, so as a last point, we've only got a couple of minutes left. Um, so on Eid, would you say that it's a, it's a balance of sort of keeping things moderate and not sort of overindulging in the eating and sort of forgetting about where you, the whole month that you've done, but sort of really focusing on sort of, yeah, well, okay, what have I learned? Where am I going forward for the year? And even the note taking to reflect from last year's what you learned and perhaps the following year you can look back. I mean, how would you say? Yeah, so all of those things are, I think are really, really important. The self-reflection is probably the most important thing. Okay. But then you also have certain things which have been recommended. So eat mm. namaz uh, for the men, sure. uh, zakat al fit, which is wajib on, you know, the, the yeah. um, the house, the yeah. person who's in control of the household, yes. the, the finances, um, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, going to the graveyard, mm. remembering That's something we forget, yeah. isn't it? It's people, yeah. So remembering our loved ones who've passed away, mm. um, and going to see family, and also maybe sort of looking within the community. There's lots of elderly people, yeah, as well. Lonely. Um, yeah, so maybe just going to visit them mm. as well would be really nice, mm. and doing it as a family. So you know, again teaching your children through action rather than telling them yeah. that this is what we should be doing just saying oh you know what let's go and visit this auntie or this you know this ma who's you know not got anyone yeah. and, and and sharing of gifts and things and you know again it's because we're celebrating because we're happy you know the giving of gifts is yes. much more rewarding than actually receiving it mm -hmm. so again even if it is just something that you you know like encourage your children to make homemade things yeah. so it's not about the money that's no. spent it's about the, the thought that don't goes become into materialistic a gift. and ruin all our but yeah so go you know it's a thought that goes yes. behind a gift um, you know and and it could be something that maybe could be something that is religiously orientated, mm. which might help um, someone to sort of look at mm. it and then move forward, continue moving forward in the 11 months. Mm. So there's lots of different things that we could be doing. Yeah. But it's it's about family, it's about celebration, but ce celebrating everything, yeah, isn't it? But and celebrating, re re remembering that the celebration is about what we've achieved and continuing that rather than the fact that the month is over. <laughs> I think from, I mean, I've really enjoyed our discussions um, and come to the end and it's been an amazing, um, you know, night, mornings that we've had together. Thank you. And I think the most, um, one of the things that we'll take away from what you've um, given us, Palsy Wisdom, is that um, put, ev put online every thought and action so that everything is for him so that when we do it, we're not having any expectation we'll receive something, but we're just giving generously. And whether that's on the and day it of becomes Eid, a father then. exactly. Every act, because Allah says in the Holy Quran that He has not created jinn or man except to worship Him. Yeah. So, so every becomes. aspect of our life will become a worship. Subhanallah. To him, what a lovely point to end on. Thank you so Thank much. You. God bless you abundantly and infinitely. And um, inshallah, He gives us the feet again, um, sit and talk again. Um, inshallah. Pray for us Shall and too, um, may God bless you. Thank you. And that's all for the series. And um, now we're going to have little Abbas and he's going to share us with us our daily hadith. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Abbas and I'm here to bring you the daily hadith from Ahl al Bayt, peace be upon them. The Ahl al Bayt showed us a lot of patience in their lives. How can we learn from the Ahl al Bayt? The Holy Prophet, peace be upon them, and his family said, Surely the month of Ramadan is the month of patience, and surely the reward of patience is heaven. Inshallah, at the end, we all go to heaven. I hope you enjoyed this part of Morning Barakah, and Happy Eid. Morning Barakah, the Ramadan edition. We have with us for questions and 
Fiqh. Sayyid Shah, Salaam Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. Alaikum Salaam wa Rahmatullah. How are you, sir? You okay? Very well, thank you. Very well. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Good, thank you. Nice to see you. Powering through the month. Powering through. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. More power to the people. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah, we're getting towards the end. So, um, it's, it. it's been emotional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's accepted whatever we do. Um, so, we have a question. Um, okay. And um, from a father in the UK. Assalamu alaikum. In regards to Sadgan Khums and general charity during the holy month of Ramadan, is it permissible and recommended to give this to close family members and friends that are struggling? Also, do Eid gifts count as Sadgan if they are given to family members? Ah, sure. Great question. Um, in regards to Islamic charity, we have Khums, we have Zakat. Sadqa, even though we, we give it as charity, it's more like arms. There's, there's, there's a spiritual benefit behind it. And, you know, it's like, it's more of a trade. It's not, you know, a charity you give, and then you get the up back, and, you know, with arms, you know, you give as, like, a form of protection, you know, to keep, you know, away evil eye as they say or you know bad energy bring mm -hmm. and bring blessings to yourself and bring blessings yeah. to yourself so in terms of homes homes as we know is 20 percent you pay on something once now if i go to the rasala order i will tell you exactly what you need to pay your homes from according to say salat the grand maraja may allah prolong his life homes is done on your profits halal wealth that is mixed with haram wealth minerals acquired gemstones obtained through diving in the sea uh, treasure troves found, the land that is limi, so the land that you purchased off a Muslim, and spoils of war. Now, the thing is with homes is 20%, but you pay it only once in a lifetime. So let's take, you know, quickly go for giving an example is if you saved £10,000 over the year, right? The homes that you have to pay, and this is surplus. Say a surplus, £10,000, you have to give, you know, 20% away. Which, according to my maths, is about £2,000. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, the following year, You've got you got remaining eight thousand. The following year you've got that eight thousand plus another one thousand. Let's say another two thousand to make it more more, more you know yeah. easy for you to understand. Another two thousand. So you've got ten thousand again. How much homes do you have to pay on that? You'd assume it would be the same. No, two thousand. Well, but it's eight. not. Is it out of the eight? It's not out of the eight. Because you pay the homes on the eight, you don't have to do it again. It's only once in a lifetime. That eight is has been you could say has been homes and purified or whatever you want to say to it. Not that it was you know, impure. <laughs> impure in the first place, mm -hmm. but that does not qualify for homes to get, it's only the 2,000. Mm -hmm. So according to my maths, that's what, 400? Mm -hmm. 400 pounds? So that's homes. Zakat on the other hand is, you know, 2.5%, and that's done mainly on crops and animals. Mm -hmm. uh, two metals, gold and silver, animals like camel, uh, cow, sheep, um, crops such as barley, wheat, um, dates, raisins. And that's just 2.5%. Okay. Khums, you have to pay that to your marja. And the allocation of khums, where it goes, you have to get permission from your marja. Because khums, there's a, you know, there is a certain amount that belongs to the imam, there's a certain amount that belongs to the sadat. So the, the amount that belongs to the imam, you can't technically you know, give it to somebody else. That's the imam's right. So you need to speak to your marja or his or the rep of your marja and say that I have this amount of homes. Uh, am I allowed to distribute it, you know, to a poor family member or an orphan I know, or you know, poor sadat that I know? What am I allowed to do and not allowed to do with that? So um, where is that homes that is for the imam? How is it allocated, reallocated, once it's collected from the people? I mean, when, once once homes is collected by the marja office, uh, they have certain you could say, what's the proper word to use here? You know, we normally, we normally, you know, we normally say that you know, within the government, mm -hmm. they have certain sections that yeah. need to be, you know, paid for. For example, like uh, military, uh, you know, uh, widow social fund, care. Yeah, so, social yeah. care. Yeah. So this is where homes normally goes to. In this day and age, we don't have, you know, like an uh, Islamic government with an infallible leading, so we can't allocate it to directly to, you know, Imam Mahdi's army, or to, you know, uh, certain funds which represent Imam Zaman and his government. Mm -hmm. So the Maraja, they take the money and they allocate it within their charities that they have. Some have orphanages, some have hospitals, some have uh, you know, housing for widowers uh, and schools. And furthermore, the tabligh side, the hawza, you know, the, 
funding for research, funding for buildings, funding for students, scholarships for students. This is where the money is that's put towards. And a lot of it is also saved. Don't think that they spend all of the money. No, a lot of it is actually saved, put aside for Imam Zanar mm -hmm. when he comes. So when we talk about general um, charity giving in this month, there's a lot of emphasis on giving and multiplying rewards and thinking about orphans in this time and the poor people feeding people. I mean, charity doesn't have to be monetary, does it? It could be just inviting people at home and feeding them. That can be. So what is the core reason for that, um, for that action, for that deed? What, what is the reward for that? In Islam, charity has been given a very, very high importance. Rasulullah Sallallahu said, even to smile is a charity. Mm -hmm. Just to brighten up someone's day. Even if you can afford to give a smile, give it. Mm -hmm. You need to give because it can help benefit somebody. Um, and in this month of Ramadan, to gain the spiritual uh, closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to gain spiritual benefits. Mm -hmm. Also, in order you know, to help yourself relieve and detach yourself from the materialistic world. Now, charity doesn't have to mean that you give everything you have or have a, you know, a detrimental or massive effect to your, your lifestyle and your yeah, life values. Yeah. But why not? It's Ramadan. Do you really need to go spend 10, 20, 30 pounds on a brand new shirt that you want to wear to the mosque? You know, isn't it better you give something to, to someone poor that they can eat this one or that? Mm. Or do you have to, can you sacrifice one or two nights, you know, of not going to, you know, shisha and saving yourself some money there and give it to maybe your cousin who's struggling to, to pay off his tuition fees or something like that? The whole detaching yourself from the materialistic world. You mentioned about um, giving to families, say for example. What about for those amongst us um, whose families, we're not born into Muslim families, so all our cousins abroad and things of that nature, family of that nature, do not, you know, don't, don't, they're not part of Dar al Islam. Because I know like for a lot of Caribbean brothers, I know that from the, from the Caribbean, we've got family that usually are in need. So some people are starting to send their religious money, quote unquote, back home and say, you know, we want to give dawah. And we want to kill two birds with one stone. We don't just give our family like some theological that and, and philosophical insights, but say this: Why am I sending the money? Because I'm a Muslim, and it says give charity and look after the needy and indeed, family members. Indeed. So we try to do, try from, to do it that apart way. Apart from forms, mm -hmm. you know, which is you know, uh, you know, you have to give it to your martyr. Mm -hmm. um, other charities is n it's not, uh, you know, like uh, mandatory that the person receiving is a Muslim. Muslims are probably preferred, but it's not mandatory. And at the end of the day, we are all human beings, we are all creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. And he says, if you're not my brother in faith, you're my brother in humanity. Mm -hmm. So we must help each other. And there's and nothing your blood wrong. relatives must, whether well, they're exactly. Muslim or they're, as long exactly. as they're not an enemy of Islam, they must, that must count for something. Exactly. There's nothing wrong with giving charity to non-Muslims. Uh, you know. And furthermore, you giving charity to a family member who's not Muslim gives a really good impression of Islam. Gives a really good uh, impression of the faith of of how toler uh, tolerant uh, we are towards other people and we're not this closed group society and this closed group community that we only look after ourselves and not others that we are very very open to promote good to promote love and, care. and love and peace among every and humanity I mean, mm -hmm. hum humanity to promote humanity amongst everybody and in terms of deeds if we can talk about charitable deeds, what is the best deed in this month to do? Um, would have been, you know, do okay, there's no real limit. We've still got Eid, we've got, you know, you know there, there, there's a lot, there's, there's a lot in terms of the best deed. I mean, one would say saving someone's life is the best deed, one would say, you know, one maybe one and a of sincere prayer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sincere worship is the best deed, mm -hmm. others may say tabligh is the best deed. It doesn't really matter what the best deed is. What really matters is, are you doing what you can? It's not about doing... But someone might come to this Ramadan and say, I want to complete the whole Quran. You know, and struggle. Somebody might turn around and say, you know what, I want to learn one new surah. And that surah may be two, three lines. It may take them a day, two days to learn it. But, you know, the sincerity and also what's realistic. You know, do whatever you can. If you can learn that one surah, two, three lines, learn it. You can read the whole Quran in one, one go, you know what I mean, in the whole of Ramadan, do it. But it doesn't mean that you have a target, you have to reach your target, and you know, you, you, you have to do it, and it's, it's going to really, really, this is not, let's say it's a bad thing, but it's going to kill you while you're trying to get this, mm. this target achieved. 
But surely, yeah. I mean, you're talking about you a, lot of, a lot of things that benefit the self. But I, I mean, when I said what was the best deed, it was for others. How is it best for The best deed for others. Yeah, what, what The best deed for others is, <laughs> you know, there are many deeds you can do for somebody else. Is the best deed me is to you know is to bring someone towards my religion, or is to pay him pay a debt off for him, or is it to save his life, or is it to bring happiness to his mother? You know, it, 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 there's no what is the best, what is not the best. Is there a, a hierarchy of your actions and and how good is this one and that one? It all comes down to sincerity, and it all comes down to your intention. At the same time, you know, do something. Don't do nothing. Don't sit there and wait for your opportunity to, you know, give someone uh, the kiss of life when you can help help an old lady cross the road. You know, mm -hmm. I think it w we, sometimes we get we're getting too involved in what weighs more rather than what can I do. Just one final question because I know we're approaching the end. I'm not sure if we got to cover in detail about giving them Eid gifts. Yes. Does that does that qualify? Giving Eid gifts to family members does that qualify as sadaqah? Giving an Eid gift. I don't see why not. Well, I think you're being a little bit stingy if you're going to be like, you know, to get two here's, words here's, here's a bit of charity and here's, you know, and it's your Eid gift as well. I think you're being a bit, you know, if you want to give charity, give charity. If you're going to give a gift, give a gift. It's all to do with the intention. Okay. Uh, at the same time, don't forget the Zagat Fitra you have to give for Eid. Um, you know, and it is um, every year you go to your local mosque or, you know, your, your local uh, scholar. Ask them what it is this year because the price always changes. And it's three ki uh, three kilos of you know like uh, flour or dates, raisins, corn, uh, you know like these staple foods that we have. Yeah. Uh, three kilograms, right? The price of that is is what you have to give For per each. head per head in the household. That is in your house on the <laughs> final eve of Ramadan uh, as uh, by sunset. That is in your house, as opposed yes. to just those who are under your. No, so if you've no. got children that live abroad if you or something have, like that. Um, you have a wife that lives in another country, another city. Just tell them yeah, there's them. those in your household, under your roof, mm -hmm. and also those that are dependent upon you. So yeah, like you said, children are poor and stuff, you'd have to pay on their behalf. Right. And also, those who have entered. So if you've got guests coming, right, staying and, at your house. Yeah, if you've got guests that come, before Maghrib Adhan, they have come to your house. To open iftar with so you. open iftar, you've invited them or something like that, and they sit there, and now sunset has come, iftar has come, you're responsible to pay on, on their behalf as well. So a message to the, the viewers, stay in your cars until <laughs> the Adhan <other laughs> happens, <laughs> and then walk in. Because you're going to cause a lot of, lot of uh, mischief. It's and, a blessing and, and if you have guests in your house, and you, know, and you get to pay their they can, they, You can come off the Maghrib alone. There's no, no, <laughs> there's okay. no, no harm there. Thank you so much. I think, um, any last tips though? This is our... Last tips. Okay, number one, Khums is, and Zakha is mandatory. So if you do not know about Khums, please refer to your local scholar and educate yourself. It is an Islamic tax which is mandatory. Furthermore, it belongs, the Khums belongs to the Imam of the time. You have to pay him. Otherwise, it's his money that you're using. So go speak to your local scholars, speak to your marcher or his uh, you know, ambassador and uh, his representative and get the knowledge and make sure you're up to date with the Khums. Uh, same with Zakat, obviously you know, pay your Zakat. And Sadqa, you should be giving Sadqa as much as you can. It does take away bad energy from the house, from your life, from, the, from others in your family and those that you pay on behalf of. And also for charity, we are a religion of charity. We are a humanitarian and humanitarian religion and helping others. You never know one day you may need that help. And Ramadan shows us the struggle that some of these brothers and sisters are going through. Why not spare them a thought and you know give to them and to make their life and their Ramadan a bit more special this year. Inshallah. 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 Thank you so much. Exactly. Thank, you so Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for all your wisdom and knowledge. No that problem. You Please do not come to my house on the last day. Hosting I'm, I'm, I'm not hosting anything, my doors are shut. Um, <laughs> this is very generous Till after my grip. After my grip, my doors open. Mashallah, these are Sayyid <laughs> scholars. Thank you so much, Sayyid, and inshallah, keep us all in your doors. Um, if you're not going to keep us in your house, <laughs> inshallah. Thank you so much, Sayyid. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 To all the viewers at home, thanks for staying with us for the duration of Ramadan, for soldiering through. It's been and, it's uh, been a pleasure. It's definitely, been. and enjoy your Eid. And um, everyone will give you details of Saint Wilson's house, so we will turn up. <laughs> um, have a blessed Eid. And I'm in Karbala. <laughs>